The latest Star Wars series Acolyte on Disney Plus has stirred up a lot of complex emotions on the internet. I know, the internet of all places. Even if you're not a Star Wars nerd like me, you may well have heard of the Acolyte series thanks to the kerfuffle around the alleged review bombing of the series on its release, and thanks to it being slapped with the dreaded woke label. The Star Wars latest series has gone fully woke. The Acolyte stars that guy from Squid Game, the little kid from Hunger Games that gets speared by Huey from The Boys. That was diabolical! That doofus guy from The Good Place. Jason? And Trinity from The Matrix. It also features X-23 from that Wolverine movie movie and a special guest spot from Grant Denyer. Uh. I think it's set about a hundred years before The Phantom Menace and the series starts out as a Jedi murder mystery thing before it quickly goes off the rails. As much as anything else though I think Acolyte is another prime example of where more than one thing can be true at the same time. I don't think there's any doubt that the Acolyte was the subject of review bombing very early on. And this being the internet, it would be naive not to think that a big part of that was not the result of culture warriors doing their thing, becoming preemptively offended by stuff like this. I want to ask you both because this is, I would say, arguably the gayest Star Wars, I think, by a considerable <laughs> margin. And uh... I think that Star Wars is so gay already. Okay. I have kind of wondered whether the response from the creator as well as the star of the show has been all that helpful or if it's just thrown more fuel onto the fire. I mean, this whole drama spawned a diss track. And so I, well, I dropped a diss track. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I heard. I won't bother showing because based on reports online, Amanda Stenberg or her management have been going around claiming copyright on people that have reacted to the video. You can find it on Instagram anyway. For what it's worth, I think review bombing is stupid and the Acolyte is a prime example of why. All it does is make it impossible to evaluate any real criticism. Legitimate criticism is lost in all the noise. And any negative reviews can be quickly written off as the work of bots or culture warriors. Which is exactly the approach that the show's creator, Leslie Headland, seems to have taken. Here's a not-so-fun fact. Leslie is arguably best known as being Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant. Not something you'd really want on your resume, I would have thought. Anyway, the review bombing also seems to have had the counter-effect of motivating whatever the opposite of review bombing is. A review glow-up, maybe. Which just further muddies the waters for anyone wanting to know if the show is any good or not. Personally, for every review or commentary I've seen of the show criticising it for being woke, I've seen plenty of reviews with valid criticisms. We welcome criticism of the show when it comes to storytelling or performance. Cool, thanks. Real talk here, there are legit criticisms of this show that have nothing to do with wokeness. They're just being drowned out in all the left versus right culture war stuff. So let's start with the timing of the show. It was all over the place. It felt extremely slow and drawn out in some places whilst rushed in others. There were whole slabs of it that just felt like padding. A prime example would be the third and seventh episodes. The third episode is basically one whole flashback, whilst the seventh is basically that same flashback told from a slightly different perspective, basically just using alternative camera angles in a lot of instances. And it really adds nothing to the story that you don't already know by that point. Then there are some episodes which seem to end just as they appeared to be building up to something, only for that momentum then to be lost by the time the next episode came around. There were characters introduced and killed off without really being built upon, so as the audience it made it kind of hard to care. Then there are characters and actors that were just plain wasted in the show. Then there's some cardboard cutout characters like this one. Odd coincidence that this just so happens to be the creator's wife. That is quite the accusation. Who else would possess the power to slay such a strong group? Something to tip the scales. Then there's the stuff that's just plain dumb that you'd probably look past if this was indeed a dashing adventure, but it's not. It's seven and a half episodes of repeated exposition. So yeah, the campfire in space, hard to let that go. The idea that you'd send four Jedi to a planet for months to essentially take soil samples, kind of dumb. The idea that you can have technology that can scan an entire planet. I'm not picking up any cities or technology. Massive life form readings though. There's something alive down there. Yet you need Grant Denyer to guide you through a forest to find a Wookiee Jedi. That was kind of hard to let go too. But the big one is that Disney seemed to have taken the idea of the Jedi, which had been mysterious and cool. At least that's how I remember it as a kid. 
and have managed to turn them into boring bureaucrats that spend most of the time going to meetings and doing admin or other menial tasks that droids were probably invented for. See those soil samples again. To be fair, there's probably enough story for four episodes here, yet somehow they managed to drag it out for eight. I guess that's a streaming thing. This quote from one of the writers of The Acolyte probably best sums up why the show was so scattered, particularly if this is how the recruitment process went. She, Leslie, asked me what I knew about Star Wars and my answer was, Harrison Ford runs around space with a giant dog. And Leslie said, you're hired. That explains a lot. Halfway through this series, I found myself asking, who was this show meant for? And to be honest, I still don't have an answer for that. There were a couple of cool moments and some good fight scenes, like this. I reckon this looked pretty cool. The fifth episode was decent, but it really just unfairly raised expectations that the show may be headed for a strong finish. There was the first on-screen glimpse of a character hardcore Star Wars fans would have been keen to see, but his two-second appearance looked as though it was designed to recreate a meme more than anything else. And it was then that a thousand voices screamed out in the night, please don't do him like Wolverine Origins did Deadpool. Overall, it was poorly paced. There was really no mystery, and by the end of the final episode I wasn't left with a feeling of wanting more. I felt like I'd seen more than enough. Disney seemed to be pushing Star Wars the same way as Marvel, essentially following the textbook for how to kill off a franchise. They seem to be saturating the market with product that's demonstrating a gradual reduction in quality. Where these things used to be an event, people just don't seem to care anymore, and it's hard to blame them. For me, these live-action Star Wars series really do seem to be an exercise in diminishing creative returns. If I had to rank them, I think I'd put The Mandalorian at the top, then Andor, then a drop down to Kenobi, Ahsoka, and The Book of Boba Fett, with The Acolyte at the bottom. Like I said at the start, Acolyte is a great example of where more than one thing can be true at the same time. It can be true that this show was a victim of review bombing and was a flashpoint for the latest mini culture war, but it can be true that Acolyte was just not that good. I know a lot of that comes down to personal opinion, but it can at least be somewhat supported by the viewership figures and the drop off in viewers. Acolyte's peak viewership was still well down on the worst of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, and that one suffered a fairly hefty drop in viewers. For me, if it hadn't been for the Star Wars factor, I'd probably have quit this one halfway. If I were forced to give it a rating, it would be a... Uh... Yeah. Having thought about it a lot, there's a third awkward truth I've been weighing up, and that is that maybe I've just outgrown the whole Star Wars thing. Take that back. Is this what getting old feels like? Yeah.